Welcome to this time-lapse version of this video. This was a beautiful photo to work from and was a birthday gift to the owner. This is done in soft pastel as all my work on YouTube is done. Please check out some of my other work and if you like what you see, please subscribe. I have sped up this time-lapse quite a bit but hopefully it gives you a good overview of creating a piece like this. This is the sketch I made using my proportional divider. If you would like to learn how to use a proportional divider, please watch part one of this series. So now I have transferred my image and let's get started. I have begun this piece with some light and dark gray shading around the dog's eyes and muzzle. This will allow me to establish a base layer of color to build upon. The success of your work greatly depends also on the paper you work on. So I recommend using UR 600 sanded paper or pastel mat because these papers accept multiple applications of color to build your layers upon. I have applied several layers of color to the dog's eyes and I've achieved a rich saturation of color and surface reflections. We can't expect a well-developed painting with just a few strokes and application of color. It's only through the patient process of applying and developing areas that we can create a well-polished piece. I usually work from dark to light pastels. So you can see here that I have established the darker values in the dog's face. Now that I have applied some of my dark values, I can move on to adding some color to the dog's face. Soft pastels are applied as a dry pigment which we can blend very easily with our sponge applicators. We usually associate pastels with drawing. However, the finished results is very close to painting. With pastels, we layer colors and then blend them together on the paper rather than mixing colors on a palette. You can now see the development of the fur texture in the dog's forehead. This is a result of multiple layers, colors, and blending of the surface. The details in pastels are developed in later stages of the painting when all the base values and colors are completed the details are added on top over it. I have begun using my light gray pastel pencil to define some of the light fur texture and highlights around the dog's eyes and muzzle area. Much work is needed to complete the fur details. When developing fur, I block in areas with my pastel sticks, trying to match the colors in my reference photo. I'm using browns, black, burnt sienna, and cream colors to gradually build some highlights and 
still working from dark to light being the last. I used light gray on this dog's whiskers and topped them with some white fur details. So to create any realistic pet portrait, the main point is to try and see what colors are there and try to match them the best you can with the color pastels you have available. That is why I choose to work straight from my tablet when drawing rather than printing out my reference photos to follow. But this is a skill to develop over time and with practice. At this stage of development, it's important to decide if you're going to have a background color. I am using a layer of black that I will blend for the background. You can see that one application does not cover the surface very well. So I'm adding a layer of gray to the background and you can see as it is blended that it covers the surface much better. If you examine the reference photo, you will see that some of the short fur is extending into the background. So it's very important to finish the background before you begin adding the outline fur. So I have begun blocking in some of the curls and swirls in her fur texture. But before I finish this area of her fur, I'd like to go back to her ears and begin blocking in the fur inside her ears. She has a lot of black fur inside and I still need to apply some more layers of black. So I'm going to come back with, with the black to help emphasize the darker fur. I will be able to blend this area to create some very soft fluffy fur. Then I can come back with some light orange, yellow, a little bit of gray and white to finish the lighter shades of fur inside her ears. The rest of this time lapse demonstrates the gradual process of detailing and shading the fur to achieve a real likeness of the dog. This is the phase that I really enjoy as I step back and reevaluate my lights and darks in the painting. Sometimes it's good to step away and come back and look at it again with fresh eyes to see what is missing, what changes are needed, and don't rush the process. Sometimes we get impatient and want to say it's finished, but you may change your mind in a day or two. I am coming back with my white pastel to add some of the short fur around her eyebrows and muzzle area. I am going to complete the black fur in her muzzle area and begin completing her uh, whiskers and mustache. I am adding some whiskers to her face and be sure to sharpen your pencil to a good point when adding the long whiskers on her face. Continue to compare your artwork with your reference photo to see all the necessary details.
I'm going to shade her fur around her neckline and her shoulder area to complete her fur. I will add some darker shades of brown to create some of the hair extending over her collar area and add a few more highlights and this painting is nearly done. I'm going to work a little bit more on her shoulder area to improve the texture. I hope this time lapse has given you a good overview of how to layer colors and build the layers to achieve a realistic feel for pet portraits. Also, the full version of Three Hours is available on Udemy.com and I'll leave a link below in the description area. I hope you have enjoyed this short video on how to draw and paint a pet portrait accurately. If you like this demonstration, please press like and leave a comment below. If you haven't subscribed, please do and don't forget to press the bell icon for notification of all my new videos. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.